Hi, I'm Diane Grover, cosmetic chemist trainer and assessor here with the Institute of Personal Care Science. Today I'll show you how to create your own buffer solutions for adjusting the pH of your formulas. We will start with the citric acid buffer solution which can be used to lower the pH of your formula. I'm making 100 grams of a 50% solution, so I'll combine 50 grams of deionized water with 50 grams of citric acid. Now if I wanted a 10% solution, I would simply add 90 grams of deionized water and 10 grams of citric acid. Gently stir that through until the citric acid has completely dissolved. Now I'm just going to pop that aside because this could take some time to fully dissolve. Now I will create a tromethamine solution which can be used to raise the pH of my formulas. I am making 100 grams of a 30% solution this time, so I'll combine 70 grams of deionized water with 30 grams of tromethamine. It is important to note here that with base solutions like tromethamine or sodium hydroxide, you should always add the base to the water and not the water to the base. And that's because dissolving bases in water can generate mild heat. So adding the base to the water allows you to control dissolution and avoid splashing. Just remember with base solutions, you need them to be completely cool before you pour them off into a HDPE or glass container. Now I will create a sodium citrate buffer. Sodium citrate buffers are needed when using actives that need a very stable and tight pH range. For example, when using some proteins, especially milk proteins. Sodium citrate buffers help the pH in a finalized formula resist moving up and down as much as it would normally in a cosmetic formulation. Sodium citrate buffers are required when you are using preservatives that contain gluconolactone. For example, GeoGuard Ultra contains gluconolactone. And that's because gluconolactone will pull the pH of your final product down, which may cause instability. When gluconolactone is stabilized correctly with a sodium citrate buffer, then the final pH of your formula will stay within a very tight pH range, ensuring stability. For my formula, I've decided to use a maximum input of GeoGuard Ultra, which is 2%. Now I need one and a half times GeoGuard Ultra in sodium citrate. That means for 2% GeoGuard Ultra, I need 3% sodium citrate. Once your acid and base solutions are completely dissolved, then you can pour them off and label and date your containers. Now that my preservative and sodium citrate are completely dissolved in the water phase, I can continue on with the rest of my formula. So if you were making a formula that did require heating and you needed to put the preservative in at the end, then you can create the emulsion, put your preservative in at the end, and for 2% of GeoGuard Ultra, we could use 6% of a 50% sodium citrate buffer solution. And you can find the link to the 50% sodium citrate buffer solution below. Now that my formula is complete and my sodium citrate buffer and preservative are in my formula, I need to check and adjust the pH to 7 to 7.5 using a 30% base solution. And then after I've achieved that, I need to reduce the pH back down to 5.4 to 5.5 with a 50% acid solution. The pH of this system will now remain stable at around pH 5.4 to 5.5 over a prolonged period, as long as all the other ingredients are also suited to the electrolytes introduced and the final pH. And that's how easy it is to put together buffer solutions. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications on videos just like this and email us at info at personalcarescience.com.au for more free formulas. Happy formulating.